and welcome Ottawans and Ottawans from around the globe. Have you ever turned sadistic and started murdering your kids because you couldn't afford to disinherit them? Do you find unlocking legacy traits to form a race of superhumans way too slow? Well today we have a very special episode for you, we are going to be speedrunning Renowned. Yes that's right, we're going to try and go from noteworthy to legendary as quickly as we possibly can. We'll be doing this through a series of strategic marriages, granting independence, and most importantly, murder. Let's go. So the absolute first thing that has to be done is we need to make our house recognizable. A house unlike any other. This is going to be the most renowned house in all of history. Naturally, we have to have a name that will live up to that lore. So we're going to need a good motto, and naturally our motto is going to be in Latin because we are part of the HRE. Ad litera maliquida fama. Beautiful. All right, now we're ready to play. So here we are in beautiful Prague. I'm really not super interested in going crazy right off the bat. The first life, maybe the first two lives, it's all about setting yourself up effectively though. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and pick up stewardship. The reason I'm doing this, you'll see in this county, we have the beautiful gold mine. So I'm going to go ahead and try and build this up as quickly as possible and increase our revenue stream. You'll notice next that we can create the Duchy of Moravia, and then once we have Moravia, we'll be able to create the Kingdom of Bohemia. I'm actually going to go, or is it modify feudal contracts? I'm going to guarantee my council rights, but offer him medium feudal taxes. And that's awesome. We were offered stewardship by our liege per month. We are going to be giving him 1.9 more gold to be guaranteed on the counts. From that, we will get a plus three gold. We're ahead of the game by 1.1 gold. After patiently waiting, we have the Duchy of Moravia that we can create. So I'll go ahead and create that. Oh, and we've had a son. Um, I'm not totally sure how to pronounce this, so I'm just going to call him Don. As you'll note, we'll start off noteworthy, making 0.72 renown per month with 11 living members and one duke. How you get renown in this game is by having living dynasty members, and if any dynasty member holds a title and is an independent ruler, Dynasty members married to independent rulers also gain a small portion of renown. For more information, check out my full guide on the mechanic here. Link in the description. All right, and we've also saved up enough gold. We can go ahead and create the Kingdom of Bohemia. So let's go ahead and do that. We are now a mighty king. If you notice, under our succession law, we have house seniority. While that's fine and you kind of avoid your land going to a three-year-old, I'm not able to groom my heirs, so let's take a look at who I would be playing as. This guy, you know, he's honest, arrogant, generous, that's not necessarily the kind of traits I want to be playing with, specifically if I'm going for this speedrun. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to Confederate Partition, or try to at least. I can't do that because this vassal here, um, my brother, not a huge fan of, uh, of changing that because I guess he's in line for the title. So I'm going to go ahead and pass Limited Crown Authority and revoke my brother's title. I'll be seen as a tyrant from this, and they will rise up against me, but it's definitely worth it in the long run. All right, we've hit 100%. Let's go ahead and enforce these demands. So be it. So now that that's done, uh, we can go ahead and change our succession to Confederate Partition, and I'll pass that law. If you take a look at my primary heir, I have him in prison. He's compassionate, honest, and generous. And not necessarily the type of play I, I really want to be playing as right now. I'm looking to kind of be more uh, deceitful and things like that. If you look at my second in line, probably my best bet in this scenario. So I'm going to go ahead and make my primary heir take the vows. Again, not the ideal way to start, but I'm saving that little bit of renown. The ones I really want to pick up first, I want to pick up Bounteous Loins to get that extra bonus to fertility, and I also want to pick up Long Reach eventually. So first things first, I'm going to pick up this Bounteous Loins. And we are going to try and have as many kids as possible and not stress too much about our succession. Because we're a kingdom title, it'll only break up internally. And because I'll be really investing in my capital and my men at arms, I should be able to revoke any titles that I need to. I don't ever play it like this for this specific gameplay and this goal. That's how I'm going to be doing it. So now it's time for our daughter to get married. The first thing I'm going to go do is take a matrilineal marriage so that there, any kids she has are from my dynasty. Then we're going to sort by relevance and we'll take a look at who's around. This guy would be a good match. He's second in line for all these titles here and his older brother here does not have any kid. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go marry her off to this guy. I'm going to pin the character we have to murder here and I will and attempt a murder scheme and it's a 95% 95%. Hopefully this is the first chance we have 
to kind of getting a dynasty member of ours into claim some other titles. So we've been saving up our gold and the first thing I'm going to go do with it is upgrade this castle. Once we've upgraded the castle, we can then upgrade our special building. So here we go, our first roll, do we kill this guy? I shouldn't. Do it. My assassin was only there to protect him from the real killer. Honest, swear to God. So let's take a look at this guy's family and why we killed him. If you look, he has one brother here, Count David, and Count David is married to my daughter, and it's a matrilineal marriage, meaning any kids they have, it will be of my dynasty. And we are just cranking out the sons. We had another son, Tass. That's a name I can't pronounce, so we won't rename it. He's a fine young lad. So let's take a peek at this just for a second. So remember Count David from before? He had a son with my daughter of the matrilineal marriage. And would you look at that? Radislav Kardashian, an absolute beauty. So you see here that now I have one count by marriage. That is David, right? She's a count by marriage. But when David passes away, it'll pass to her son, Vadislav, and he will then become one count. So right now we're only getting 0.20. And later we'll be getting, I think it's 0.4. Really, um, we're just going to be trying to spam out as many kids as we possibly can, spam out as many marriages, and then murder to kind of strategically align members of our house to be controlling territory. So our heir is ready to marry. So I'm going to try and find somebody that's fecund. And they're going to be doing a lot of fecunding, pumping out the children. So we've had another son, but my wife wants to name him something. I don't know how to pronounce that. I actually had something else in mind much better so we've successfully killed this irishman which means the primary heir is now the spouse of my daughter and their children is of the kardashian house which is absolutely perfect now as soon as the liege passes away the title will pass to this gentleman and we will have a count by marriage and then after that when their kids inherit the title we should have a full-on count so now I have a glut of gold and I really want to focus on improving my men-at-arms regiment. For when I die, there's going to be a transition of power, possibly a power struggle. I may need those men-at-arms to maintain my power. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to pick up some of these specialized units. They're just a bit better in armored footmen. They have less toughness, but they're better in everything else pretty much. So I'm going to go ahead and pick them up. All I'm really doing right now is taking this massive amount of gold per month and I'm just buying buildings. I'm not focusing on anything else. I'm just building districts that are going to bring me in more gold, more men at arms, more stability. I'm really focusing in my main county because that's one I know I'm going to hold no matter what after I die. And that's the one that's going to carry me till I can kind of reclaim my own lands within my own kingdom, right? I haven't been worrying about succession. I haven't been disinheriting my kids i've been saving my renown oh no we've died okay cool died from being ill all right a known murderer he will atone for his unspeakable crimes in the next life that's exactly how i want to be remembered this is what i was mentioning right we flipped over and now we no longer hold this county which was our main cash cow i'm gonna go ahead and revoke my brother's title here it's uh, likely he will rebel, I would assume so. Oh, he didn't even rebel. That was so easy. Okay, perfect. All right, and it's time to choose another dynastic legacy trait. I'm going to go for Guile. The reason being is, yeah, okay, the first one's not so bad, but the second one is going to be huge with a hostile scheme success chance at 10% and an agent bribe cost at minus 50%. You'll now note um, we have one living count in our dynasty. So if you'll recall, my older sister, I married her off to this guy, Davit, who then had a son and he's already amassed our principality and the counties and all that and given one of them to my uh, sons. So I'm looking at my primary heir. Now he is absolutely terrible. I'm going to go ahead and disinherit him. But hold on a sec. Before I do that, I'm going to go look for a spouse, Countess Yelizaveta. Over here in Russia, we'll marry him. She has one title already and no children. This is actually perfect. So I'm going to line this up. I'm going to get them married. And once they're married, I'll disinherit him. All his children will hold that title. They will be of my dynasty. And we are in the money. All right, so take a look. My son here, he will be able to marry. Augusta here is the second in line 
for these titles. So I'm going to go ahead and send him off to Augusta, and we are going to go ahead and start to murder him. this kid. All right, and let's go ahead and see if this works out, murdering this child. I, I had to do it. I'm a little stressed out by it. I had to do it. And I am dead. Uh, good news, I can play as my son, and now it's really going to start getting interesting. Perfect, and a great way to start it off is that our sister can marry. This gentleman, second in line for the throne, chance of children is medium. I like it. Let's go ahead and do that. We will go ahead and start murdering the first in line for the throne, and hopefully we will secure them. All right, and it's time for a crusade, which is great. Crusades are going to be a key part of my play here. I am going to invest heavily in trying to be the number one contributor so that I can install one of my house members into wherever we win. Ready, fight! All right, so let's go ahead and murder this guy. We'll pull the trigger on this, 95% chance. Never underestimate the power of the mob. Okay, so I went on a quick pilgrimage, and I got 625 piety. I now have enough piety to redirect the crusade. I'm going to go ahead and select Pomerania. It's really close to my home. Uh, it should be good. So let's go ahead and redirect the war target there. So my cousins of my dynasty, he's got a child. Let's go ahead and appoint him. It's finally time to bring St. George's holy wrath against the vile heathens of Pomerania. All right, we had a son. How do you say that? Bull slab? Bull slab? I think we'll be playing as... Nathan. Joe Nathan. So now some other Christians join the party, and we're just taking over the capital right quick. So you'll see my current rank is first, and we are at 100%. Anyways, I should be able to point a Kardashian as the king of Pomerania. It'll be interesting. Let's see. And you will now see that our renown went up a whole one per month uh, because we have an additional king so it's time for us to pick another dynasty legacy, and this time I'm going to go with Long Reach. This is the one we talked about last time. Okay, so our daughter is of age. This one is quite interesting. So he's second in line with only one brother. The father's old, the mother's old. This actually might work out quite well. Send that off, and I'm going to go ahead and murder the brother. I think it's time we leave the Holy Roman Empire. I'm going to go ahead and press my demands with the Duke of Lombardy down here in Italy. And let's go ahead and do it. And we caught them again back here. Oh my days. This is actually disgusting. We are just destroying them. All right. I just let it tick over. And with this, we will fully have escaped the HRE. Oh, perfect. Would you look at that? Bohemia, a nation. Absolutely a thing of beauty. So I noticed that our bishop has a claim way down here. So I'm going to go ahead and declare war on this guy. He's only got 4,000 troops and shrinking. So, uh, so I'm going to go ahead. And I'll incur some tyranny here, but um, I will revoke this title here as my own. So I was looking, and my nephew here, he's a genius. He's uh, pretty sick, and the whole duchy can be his. We will also grant him independence at the same time. And he can do his own thing now. I, I took a little stress from that, but, you know, he's on his own, and he's of our house. So that's really good. I'm super happy about that. So now I've secured a few counties up here in northern France, so I'm going to go ahead and grant independence to this son of mine, and he will have those counties now. They're all his. Okay, so I have died once again, but this is going to be a huge life. We're playing as King Joe Nathaniel. Um, we lost our kingdom of Pomerania to our brother, which is fine because he's of our house. So I'm totally cool with that. We also gained some land over here in Russia just because a member of our house died and left it to us. I'm going to eventually try and get somebody from our dynasty to take that over and just grant it all and grant them independence. I'm going to go ahead and go up the intrigue tree and just keep going. I'm going to grab the one with uh, bonuses to our fertility. All right, so we've got this guy of our house. His primary heir, again, is of our house. So all I'm going to go ahead and do is grant him independence. And you'll notice we go from 8 to 8.6. Oh, baby, and here we go. Another crusade. So my warriors are indeed ready to fight. The Pope wants to go for Jerusalem, but I've got other ideas. All right, the Kingdom of Norway sounds good. So let's go ahead and select that as a target. Beautiful. Yeah, baby! That's what I've been waiting for! Here we go, baby. We're attacking Norway. And I've just murdered one more person. When this guy dies over here in Provence, 
the land will no longer go to this son, but in fact this son, who is in a matrilineal marriage with my daughter. All right, and we just need to siege a little bit more land here. Victory! So we've won the crusade, and we're installing our cousin, who is a Kardashian, on the throne of Norway. Would you look at that beautiful chunk of Crusader Norway. Oh my days, it's so small. <laughs> oh my days. Ha ha ha. It's currently the year 1169, so 100 years. And we've secured 10 renown per turn. Having 89 living members, which is not great. We should have way more by now. Three kings, five dukes, and seven counts, independent of their own. Honestly, this is super solid and sets us up beautifully for what we're trying to accomplish. Ladies and gentlemen, we've hit the midpoint of the video. That's right. I'm here to inform you that today, for every like on this video, we'll commit one act of murder. In the game, obviously, please, government, don't put me on a list somewhere. Yes, that's right. All the digital murder you know and love on demand with the click of one like button. Thank you, and we return to the game. Just looking here for a marriage for my daughter, this guy over in Finland, three titles, will take a matrilineal marriage, so I am quite excited about that. Alright, so I've just abducted uh, this guy, he's a drunk, and he's a fornicator, but he is of my house. So I'm going to negotiate his release and recruit him. Come on over here! So now that I have him, I can actually go ahead and grant him some titles, specifically this title and the duchy itself. And then what we can do is just go ahead and grant him independence. So now that's one more member. All right, so I'm going to be declaring war on these rulers down here. Now, they are uh, Muslims, so it is very easy for me to declare a holy war for this territory. I fully plan on giving it away to my son and then just granting him independence. All right, so we've successfully gotten the war score down here in Sardinia to 100%. So I'm going to go ahead and enforce the demands. So be it. Disband all. So now we have a good chunk of Sardinia. So I'll grant him the Duchy of Sardinia, as well as the Kingdom of Sardinia. And he will become an independent ruler. Thank you so much for playing my game. And you'll notice our renown just went up to 15.43 per month. Oh, no. So the HRE has declared war on us. They have 32,000 troops uh, potentially at their disposal. This is not a huge deal, but uh, definitely I'm a little scared. <laughs> I'm in danger! And in the meantime, we actually took the Kingdom of Venice. I was just going to give it away. And what we'll do is see this guy here. We will grant him this title, um, the county. And then when we have enough gold, we can make the duchy and eventually the kingdom. One of the huge advantages of being a dynasty head is I can call all my dynasty members to war for a little bit of renown. Oh no, they're all behind my line, so I gotta run my dudes back ASAP. Get ready here in the hills, and I got caught with my pants down. But it's okay, um, because it's we're winning this war, actually. We brought 21k dudes in, they brought 25. We lost 4,000, they lost 9. That was a huge clap. All right, and we've beaten them back. We've murdered them in I don't know how many battles, and they'll give us a pretty chunk of change, huge bunch of prestige, and we can be happy with the job we've done. We can also go ahead now and create the Duchy of Venice, then create the Kingdom of Venice, and then we can go ahead and grant those away. We'll grant the Duchy, we'll grant the Kingdom, and we are now up to 16 renowned per turn. So my sister can marry this young lad, who is the primary heir on all these titles here. So it's time to get my men-at-arms regiments. Uh, light horsemen, I think we will destroy them in lieu for armored horsemen. All right, and we've got another holy war. That's awesome. My warriors will be ready to fight indeed. I think the kingdom of Finland will be much easier. Let's redirect that. All right, it's a real mess up here. Uh, territory is going back and forth and just flipping all over the place. The problem is there's nowhere to resupply up here. The locations have like zero supply limit. It's actually terrible. Like, look, this place has a supply limit of 1100. Look how many guys are fighting around here. Like, that's there's no way that's going to like be of any use to anyone. So yet again, we are first in the crusade and we're at 100% and we will be giving it to our beneficiary and Tal. Oh, and what an absolutely pitiful display from the HRE. Serves you right. It looks like they are getting absolutely demolished by the Pope. 
What I'm going to go ahead and do, just because he was so kind as to declare war on me when England was already warring me, I'm going to declare war on him. And uh, you know what? I'm going to claim this holy site for the Catholics. I think that's probably a good idea. I'm going to be a little cheeky with it too, and I'm going to raise my armies way up here and then kind of send them down. Oh no, we lost a king. You'll notice we went down to 17.92. Crusader Norway is gone, which is a huge rip. So time for another dynasty legacy. I'm going to go ahead and grab this one. A congenial trait to be more common in your dynasty. And we want the fecund trait because we want to have tons and tons of heirs. Oh, and how sweet it is. Let me hit that 100% and enforce the demands. Vindication! So one of our sons can get married to the primary heir of this title here. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I didn't know this. Down here in Cologne, you can see that this is a Catholic holy site. And because of that, we can make a special building, specifically the Cologne Cathedral. This will increase our monthly renown as well as give us additional piety. And honestly, it's becoming too easy. So for my daughter, I want a matrilineal marriage because we have such a high renown already. Um, this guy here will just give it to us. So down here in Africa, I've taken a little chunk of land and then I've been able to declare holy wars as I please after that. Uh, it's been going really well so far. I feel like I'm going to try and take as much of this kingdom as I possibly can and then just grant it to one of my grandsons. I think that's probably the play. Great. And we took a valuable hostage early on and taking the rest of this duchy was really, really easy. See, this is the whole kingdom. So we already have a pretty decent chunk of it so just a quick update on our renown we are now making 20 per turn with four kings 10 dukes eight counts what's going well all right so it's time to say goodbye and farewell to some of our esteemed colleagues look at lesser poland here what i'm gonna do because he's of my dynasty i'm gonna go ahead and grant him this duchy as well as the rest of the little bit of poland up here and say thank you very much good luck on your independence take it and go I'm hoping to secure the entire kingdom here, and then I can just grant that away with relative ease. So the next guy I'm going to declare war against is this guy right here. Do the holy war for the duchy. Same thing up here. It's probably going to be an easy collapse. This guy down here will be the last one. Why don't we just do that? And that should give us the kingdom. So let's clean these guys up once and for all. Now, with relative ease, we've finished this first war, so we can enforce our demands and proceed to the next war. All right, the next war is done, too. That one was easy. Let's enforce those demands. And now we just march our troops down here, finish the third and final war, which should secure us this kingdom. Wonderful, and we've hit 100% on the third war. All we have to do now is create all the duchies within and the kingdom and grant it to our heir. Okay, we can grant him all of the rest of these titles, as well as the duchies within. Now, it's been long enough. We've actually researched primogenitor in the meantime. When we die, all our stuff goes to our primary heir, and we don't have to worry about uh, revoking titles. So I have the ability to unlock more legacies. Let's get it, the Octogenarian Club. Yo, Prince Philip had that one unlocked, for sure. So, looking over at these guys, they're quite weak, they're massively in debt, and I think it's time to declare war for an entire kingdom. Most of this northern part of Africa will then become a little bit Catholic, but definitely 100% Kardashian. You know what? I mean, I'm going to be around here. What's another 80? There's no sense in not picking these up, I guess. So we're just rolling over these first two counties. We can enforce the demands here and take that first county. With a quick tap of the play button, we can also take the second county now. Oh, and we are just destroying them. And the Winter Soldier takes the battle. And with that last little tick of the capital, we take a 100% war score. And this kingdom is rightfully ours. Oh, beautiful. Look at Bohemia taking over North Africa. And we should be good to hit Legendary just after the year 1300. So within 250 years. So there's nothing else to do but find one of our sons. This guy looks great. He's a genius. Let's grant him all the titles down here. Perfect. Now we have to save our gold and make the duchies and things like that, and we should be good to go. 
Wonderful, and the time has come. So he can have the Duchy of Seuss and this one and the entire kingdom, which will make him independent. Wonderful. So that's another king. We're up to 24. Let's grant this one away as well, and he will become independent. Beautiful. So that brings us up to 24.17 per month, and we are so close to legendary. Two, only 200 more to go. A few moments later. We are now up to 25 per turn, and we have ticked over the status of legendary. Take a quick note of the date, 1304, less than 250 years since we began. And what a game it's been. In hindsight, I would have done a few things differently to expedite this process. Hey, you never know, maybe I'll do another one of these. Let me know in the comments what you would have done differently. As always, if you want to pick up where I left off, I put the save game file in the description below, or a link to it. I am once again asking for your support. If you could just take two seconds, hit that like and subscribe button, it would help me out tremendously. I got some great news for you. Displayed on the screen right now are two videos I've hand selected that I think you're going to love. If you got time, check them out for more moments exactly like this. No, that was my good son. My good son just died. And how did he die? Mysterious circumstances. I saw that you won. Don't lie to me, Walt. Sussy baka. Thank you.